who do you think you are to tell me what to do? In a sense, America has enshrined the idea of complete and absolute freedom as its God. It doesn't matter where we are on the social or political scale, we all have requirements we don't like and flat out refuse to obey. Some want to compel mask wearing, while others rebel against the idea of such compulsion. Yet, switch the sacred cow, and suddenly the rebel becomes an ardent proponent of compliance and the mask enforcer an unrepentant refuser. This attitude is particularly powerful among religious folk, most of whom have dared ask the one and only God, who do you think you are to tell me what to do? Today's Morning Minutes in the Bible on Throwback Thursday examines that problem in an April 1973 article from Plain Talk magazine. Saul's Weakness by Robert F. Turner When God made Saul, son of Kish, to be king over his people, there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he, 1 Samuel 9, verse 2. He was concerned for his father, verse 5. Wanted to pay the preacher, verse 7. Now there's a man for you. Was a humble man, verse 21. Shy, chapter 10, verse 22. And God had given him another heart, verses 6 and 9. He was not a vindictive man, chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. And he gave God the glory for victory. But Saul had a weakness. He seemed to covet a priestly status and pursued his goal in high-handed defiance of God's will. Both of the errors associated with his rejection as king have to do with unlawful offerings. 1 Samuel 13 verses 8 through 14 and chapter 15 verses 1 through 23. Put it another way, Saul was willing to worship God, provided he could be top banana and do it the way he wished. Of course, genuine worship is impossible when such an attitude prevails. And Saul had another weakness, of character, perhaps more destructive in the final analysis than his yen to play priest. Unlike David, who would acknowledge his sins and ask forgiveness, Saul made excuses and blamed others for his failings. He assigned himself noble reasons for doing that which was contrary to God's will. The people were scattered. Samuel was late. The enemy was upon us. It was needful that we pray to God. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. All so reasonable, right-seeming, and wrong. Samuel said, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of Jehovah thy God. 1 Samuel 13, verses 11-13. through 13. When Saul was sent to destroy the Amalekites, he saved King Agag and the best of the stock. He claimed, I have performed the commandment of Jehovah. But about that time, an old cow bawled, as Foy Wallace Jr. once said, and gave him away. The people spared the flocks to sacrifice unto Jehovah, a noble motive, and the blame is put on that indefinite mass that is supposed to relieve the individual of the need for conviction and action. Chapter 15, verses 13 and following. To obey is better than sacrifice. Saul's weakness cost him a kingdom. How many of us will miss heaven because we seek to do God's work in our way and blame others for our sins? Let me be blunt, ladies and gentlemen. This question is for you and me. Let's not put it off on all those others who don't worship God's way, and there are plenty out there. Instead, look closely in the mirror of God's word, and let's ask ourselves if Saul's weakness is ours. Well, thanks for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible on Throwback Thursday. Until tomorrow, this is James McClenney, hoping you have a great day.